A Learner Profile, Attention Deficit and Hyperactivity Disorder by Susana Rios. Disclaimer. This presentation should not be replaced by the advice and consultation of a doctor and health professionals if you are interested in knowing about the Attention Deficit and Hyperactivity Disorder. The following presentation is intended to fulfill the requirements of an academic assignment which requires the author to develop a learner's profile and identify practical applications of the Universal Design for Learning principles to address these learner's differences in the design of online coursework. The following presentation is divided in two parts. The first part contains information about what is ADHD, what is the diagnosis for ADHD, what are the symptoms for ADHD, and what are the characteristics of a child with ADHD. The second part of this presentation defines the Universal Design for Learning framework and explores how the UDL framework is applicable to the needs of a learner with ADHD while designing online coursework. First part, all about ADHD. Included in the Diagnostics and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders for Edition Text Revision, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is a disorder that is commonly problematic among childhood, affecting up to 9% of school-aged children. Subcategories with the category of Attention Deficit and Disruptive Behavior Disorders includes Conduct Disorder, Oppositional Defiant Disorder, and Disruptive Behavior Disorders. Types of ADHD there are three types of ADHD according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders for Edition. Predominantly hyperactive impulsive type, predominantly inattentive type, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder combined type, which includes both hyperactive impulsive and inattentive symptomology. Identifying ADHD could be troublesome due to confusing symptoms that other disorders coexisting with ADHD display. To be able to diagnose ADHD, multiple diagnosis procedures are needed including a series of behavioral observations, psychological assessments, and obtaining information from different sources. Also, for a child to receive diagnosis, symptoms must negatively impact their academic performance, social interactions, and family relationships. Followed by interviews, rating scales are the most widely advocated procedure for evaluating children with ADHD, considering that they are time and cost effective. Examples of these tools are the ADHD Symptoms Rating Scale, the Corner Rating Scales, the Behavioral Assessment System for Children, 2nd Edition, and the Child Behavior Checklist. Lack of attention and impulsivity are common characteristics among children with ADHD, along with hyperactivity. Because children under age 5 tend to rate as inattentive and overactive by their parents, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders for Edition recommends that symptoms must be present for a minimum of six months prior to diagnosis. If symptom onset occurs subsequent to seven years of age, particularly in cases of hyperactivity, the cause may be something other than ADHD, such as substance abuse, learning disabilities, or physical illness. In order to count as sufficient for diagnosis, the symptoms need to present in two settings, need to be present in two settings, for example, at home and school, or at a school and after school programs, but not in only one setting. Because each learner is different, educators face the need to incorporate new ways of teaching methods. Universal Design for Learning, known as UDL, is a framework that allows teachers to design curriculum while addressing the multi-needs of the students by using new media technologies that are responsive to learners' diversity. In this part of the presentation, 
we will explore the applicability of the UDL framework to the needs of a learner with ADHD by using the UDL Guidelines Educator Worksheet. Founded in educational research, UDL is an approach that has three general principles based on the three neural networks, which are recognition, strategic, and effective networks. These principles are to support recognition, learning, provide multiple flexible methods of presentation. It provides multiple means of representation. Principle two, it's about supporting strategic learning, providing multiple and flexible methods of expression and apprenticeship. It provides multiple means for action and expression. The third principle, it's about supporting effective learning, providing multiple and flexible options for engagement. It provides multiple means of engagement. Learner's Profile. For this activity, I have chosen to study the young learner with attention deficit and a hyperactivity disorder called as ADHD. The most salient needs to be taken into consideration while designing online course are that these students show symptoms of inattentiveness, impulsivity, and hyperactivity. Now we will explore the applicability of the UDL framework to the needs of a learner with ADHD by using the UDL Guidelines Educator Worksheet. A section of the template is displayed on the screen. The characteristics of impulsivity, inattentiveness, and hyperactivity guided the applicability of the UDL framework to the academic needs of learners with ADHD. The UDL Guidelines Educator Worksheet is categorized in three parts. Each part corresponds to one of the three brain networks and they are highlighted in different colors in the following slides. Number one, recognition network. In this part, I wanted to make sure that I'm tackling these four areas. Provide options for perception. My notes include that due to the lack of attentiveness, a learner with ADHD requires of multimodal options to perceive the information. I believe that the teacher could offer ways of customizing the display of information by presenting the information in a format that is flexible where the learner could change the size of text or visual content, control the color in text in background to make it more appealing to perceive. Also, I would like to offer alternatives for auditory information. I think the teacher could provide visual charts including music or sound when typing certain keys or when completing an assignment. Lastly, I would like to offer alternatives for visual information. I think the teacher could provide a written transcript of a video and that will help the student to be focused on the content. Also including visuals for key concepts using as hyperlinks or highlighting them with color or brightness. In the same trend of recognition network, I think that it's important to clarify vocabulary and symbols. Part of what helps a student stay in focused is that he or she understands the vocabulary. In this case, the teacher could pre-teach vocabulary connected with the student's prior experiences or prior knowledge. Dr. Margarita Calderon offers a great method on how to pre-teach vocabulary in seven steps. Attaches the link. Also clarifying sectors and structure. I strongly believe that teachers can provide diagrams or graphs or illustrations that help the students clarify unfamiliar syntax, ensuring that all the students have access to the information and allowing them to represent their understanding in various ways is important. They could highlight the key concepts words in text or designing a concept map that helps them represent their understanding with visual tools. Moving on to the strategic networks, I believe that it's important teachers highlight patterns, critical features, big ideas, and relationships. The work of a teacher should entail using various examples of one concept and provide prompting and support as needed to be respectful of individual learning pacing. Review learned skills and concepts explicitly to help content continuation and skill mastery. 
in the guide information processing, visualization, and manipulation, I think the teachers could start with a table where the students can process new understandings. This helps him or her organize her or his strand of thinking into smaller pieces, easier to process metacognitively while ensuring attentiveness. Providing options for physical action. Due to their impulsivity, students with ADHD requires various ways to act and express their thinking. I believe that the teacher could allow students to go over materials, content activities, and assignments at their own pace. No time limits are used. Also provide opportunities where the student physically controls the selections of the text and actively interacts with materials by using hand motions, voice, keyboards, and touch screens. These will help to vary the meta methods for response and navigation. To optimize access to tools and assistive technologies, I think teachers could peruse assistive technologies available to their side and learn which of them could be acquired for the classroom. These include alternative keywords, specialized interactive tablets for preschoolers, for example, developmentally age-appropriate software, and allowing the students to use keyboard commands as well as mouse use. Using multiple media for communication. I think the teachers could, could help the students by including the student to use, by allowing the student to use multiple sources of media for communication, including drawing, doodling, typing text, filming, taking pictures, including or creating music, sculpting, or videotaping. Remember that impulsivity can be venued through many strategic teaching methods. Also, to use multiple tools for construction and composition, I believe that teachers provide, can provide learners with various tools to compose tests. Include grammar checkers, list of sentence starters, recording, story webs, and concepts mapping tools where they can display their thought in 2D. For young children with ADHD, it could be a little challenging to master the skill of using wikis, animations, or creating presentations on their own. But with teacher support and scaffolding, I still believe that it could be possible. For guiding appropriate goal setting, the teacher could be clear what the objective of the lesson is. This allows the students to know that he or she needs to get to point B and then to point C, etc. Include the student in determining the goal setting. Create a list that could be a visual representation of the progress attained and to easily see what is next to do and accomplish with the schedule. Facilitate managing information and resources. I think the, uh, for teachers it's important to provide graphic organizers and tablets to collect and organize data. The working memory capacity of the student is supported while helping the student maintain and retain pieces of information critical for learning. Remember that there is a possibility that impairment of response, inhibition, and working memory are the co-deficits in ADHD. We move on to effective networks. In here, we need to provide options for recurring interest. Due to their hyperactivity, students with ADHD requires a ways to keep them engaged in what they are doing. The teacher could, to optimize individual choice and autonomy, the teacher could allow the student to be different by ensuring them of the many ways they can choose the types of rewards and consequences of their learning the tools they use to collect data and produce their assignments. They can choose colors, designs, and layouts to portray their understandings, and they can choose the sequence to time assignments completion. Also, to optimize relevance, value, and authenticity, I think the teacher can ensure that the information and activities include the various multicultural, multisocial, and multilinguistic communities of learners. Make the content social and culturally relevant and be cognizant of age and ability appropriateness of the activities. When the students relate to the content in ways that connects their social, cultural, and linguistic backgrounds, I believe that there's higher possibilities for students to be active and engaged with the activity, but not hyperactive or overreactive. To heighten silence of goals and objectives, I think that teachers can Discuss rules and social behavior and be clear about the limiting the consequences. Share the goals in various explicit ways. Teach the usability of a scheduling or time tracking tool for project completion. 
also allowed dividing long-term goals into smaller pieces in short-term goals. Remember that as recommended by Amon 2012, define clear rules against disruptive behavior and combine them with immediate consequences. It's a good strategy for dealing with ADHD kids. Also to foster collaboration and communication, I think that teachers design, can design opportunities for a student to stay actively engaged at all times. Create projects that require group collaboration or small group input. Explicitly and concisely define the expectations of each work with rubrics and norms. Also to promote expectations and benefits that optimize motivation, I think teachers can use frequent reminders about the goals and rubrics for projects and assignments. They can minimize instructions, maintaining high levels of activity and increase engagement. I think that they need to allow other people to come as mentors, volunteers, and coaches to help them with personal goal setting. To facilitate personal coping skills and strategy, I think that teachers can redirect judgments in ways that the student reflects on how to change it using positive, peaceful, and controlled ways. Seek and, invent, seek and invite emotional support groups to provide inspirational notes as needed. Remember that teach the students to cope with frustration and coping skills is key to dealing with this type of students. Developing self-assessment and reflection, I think teachers can ask students to reflect about their personal goals for the class, for the activity, and for their learning experience in the long run.